Hello everyone, my name is William and I'm an application engineer for Go Engineer. Today I'm going to talk about reverse engineering in Arctic Studio 18. So what I have here is a water pump cover for a circulating tank that we use for cleaning 3D printed parts. And the objective today is to obtain some cross sections, some reference planes that I could import into SOLIDWORKS so I could reverse engineer this part into a parametric solid body. And as you can see, I already aligned this part to the origin. So I'm going to skip that part, but if you'd like to see that in detail, please check out my video on precise positioning in Arctic Studio 18. And as you can see, the z-axis is aligned to the center of this cylinder. The xy plane and the bottom of the part is also aligned. And I aligned this face to the x-axis. So before I get my cross sections, what I like to do is create some reference planes first. For that, I'm going to go into the Construct tab, click on Create. I can click on make perpendicular to the x-axis and I don't want a plane going through that axis because as you can tell the plane goes through the outer cylinder here so I need a plane to go through here so I can make a revolve for that area. What I'm going to do is under rotate I'm going to click on the z-axis and type in 45 and as you can see it rotates the plane and the best part is that it's actually rotating off of the origin and that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'll click on create plane and now that shows up on my feature tree. So if I get a cross section from that plane, that'll give me the majority of the part, but I still need a couple more. For example, this face here, I want it to be aligned to the X axis. So rather than creating a best fit plane, I'm gonna click on translate, click on make perpendicular to the X axis. I can also click on this front plane here so it helps me visualize this and I'm gonna zoom in. And then I can grab this triad here and move it about right here. And if I rotate my part, you'll see that's just about where I want it. You can see there's some purple overlap there. That's what I want to see. And I'll go back to my front view and click Create Plane. And I actually need one more, so I'll click on this again, zoom out a little bit, grab the arrow. And there's a fillet in this area, but I'm just going to get as close as I can here and also create a plane. And those three planes are all I need for my cross sections. For that, I'll go into the Measures tab. Click on Sections and Volume, Use Constructed Planes, and select Plane 1. And as you can see, the software gives me a preview of the cross-section. However, I don't need that entire profile, so I'm going to uncheck where it says Scale to Bounding Box. And I can grab this arrow here and move it to about the halfway point. And when I hit Calculate, you'll see that the software is only going to give me half of that profile, which is really what I need for my revolve. And if you like the preview, you can click Save Section. And that gives me a profile for the majority of the part, but I still need some more. So I'll go back to sections and volume. This time I'll click parallel to XY plane or Z axis. And I can just pick a reference point here and zoom in. I'm really just looking for an area that gives me the outside cylinders and the holes. I also need to make sure that my cross section picks up those rib features. So I'll zoom out to make sure that's going to give me what I need. I'll click calculate and save section. Now I need a cross section for the outside flange. So I'll go back to my sections and volume. I'll pick use constructed planes and I'll click on plane two. I'll use my front view and I can use my arrows to make sure it gives me the best possible cross section. And that looks about right. I'll click on calculate, save that section. Now the last cross section I need is for this cylinder here. So I'll go back and do the same thing. I'll pick plane three and place it somewhere in the middle here. I'll also click calculate and save that section. And essentially, that's all I need to reverse engineer this part. To transfer these features to SOLIDWORKS, I can click here and export to SOLIDWORKS. And once it imports your cross sections, you can also import your reference planes. For those, you can select all three of them, right click, export, export to SOLIDWORKS. Once you have everything in SOLIDWORKS, I like to right click on each of these features and break the link. SOLIDWORKS uses 3D Interconnect to import the features from Arctic Studio into SOLIDWORKS. And if you break the link, it'll make things easier to hide and show during the reverse engineering process. Once you have that, it's also a good practice to rename all of your features. This will just help make your design process a lot easier. Also, if you have any unwanted data in any of these cross sections, you can always edit the sketches. So the first thing I'm going to do is hide anything I don't need to see. And my first feature is going to be for the revolve. So I'm going to make a brand new sketch on the revolve surface. 
I'll hide the surface while I'm sketching. Put in a center line. And trace over to the best of my ability the cross section. So I'm using it as a guide and I'm putting in vertical and horizontal lines wherever I can. And remember, you can always add fillets and chamfers later. And I'm going to trim up the corners. And I'm going to extend this line. Features, Revolve, I will close the sketch. And as you can see, I got a nice preview. I'll hide that cross section and turn on the one for the small cylinder and the rib feature. Make a brand new sketch on this face. For now, I'll hide the solid body. I can use the perimeter circle tool to give me an accurate circle. And again, I'm just tracing over the cross section. I will get rid of these coincident relationships because I actually want to put in a center line and make that center to the top axis. So I'll put in a center line, click on the circle center mark and the center line and make those coincident. And that is going to deviate a little bit, but that's okay because for my design intent, I want that circle to be centered on the origin. I can turn on my solid body. Features, Extrude, select up to surface, and I'll select the bottom of the part. Hit the check mark. I'll make a brand new sketch on that top face, and now I'm going to make the rib feature. I'll turn off the solid body. For this, I think the best option is to create a straight slot. So I'll get as close as I can. And if it's not perfect, you can always grab the points and snap them to the cross section. And that's really close. I'll go ahead and hide the cross section, turn on my solid body. The last thing I want to do is make the top arc tangent to the arc for the solid body. So I'll click on both of them and make them tangent. Features, extrude, and I'll use the same face, check mark. I'll hide that cross section and turn on the one for the flange. I will also need the flange surfaces, and I'll make a brand new sketch on flange surface number one. Just like before, I'll use the perimeter circle tool to give me an accurate circle. Features, extrude, and pick the flange surface number two. That'll give me the correct width. Hide those surfaces, and I'm also going to hide that cross section and turn on the one for the large cylinder. I can make a brand new sketch on this face. Hide the solid body. And once again, use that perimeter circle tool to give me the most accurate circle I could possibly get. This time I will erase the coincident relationships. I want that circle to be concentric with the flange circle. Features, Extrude, I'll turn on my solid body, and I'll pick this face right here. That gives me a nice preview, so I'll accept that. Now I can make a pattern for the rib features. Click on Circular Pattern, drop down my feature tree, select the rib feature, and also a direction. I need 12 of these but I don't need all of them, so I can click on instances to skip and turn off all the ones that I don't need. So I don't need these, or that one, and I'll accept it. I can hide that cross section and turn on the next one. This is for the hole on the cylinder. Make a brand new sketch. Perimeter circle. 
I will once again delete the coincident relationships with the cross section because I want this to be concentric with the other circle. Snap it. And this is just going to be a through all cut. Select through all. Check mark. Now I can make a circular pattern for the cylinder feature. Click on my direction. This time I only need four. Equally spaced. And I can select the cylinder and also the cut that I just made. I get a nice preview and accept. Now I can make my revolve cut. I'll turn on the revolve surface, turn on the cross section, and make a brand new sketch. Just like before, I can hide that surface while I'm sketching, put in the center line. This time I'm going to draw the internal geometry since this is a cut. Also, there is some slanted areas on this part, but that's because it's warped. So I'm going to stick to creating vertical and horizontal lines. That's just my design intent, but this could be designed as is if you like. I decided to make everything nice and square. Corner trim tool. And just like before, you go around and get some nice corners. Zoom in here. Finish up with a line at the bottom, and that'll give me a nice profile that I can revolve cut. I will say yes on that message because I do want it to close the sketch. Turn on my solid body. I get a nice preview. Hit the check mark. Now I can turn on the cross section for the flange hole. I'll make a brand new sketch on the flange face. I'll use that perimeter circle tool. Snap my three points. And once again, delete my coincident relationships because I want this to be concentric. Click on the center mark and snap it. Features, extrude cut. Now this does not need to go all the way through. So I'm gonna change this to a blind cut. And just make sure it doesn't go all the way through. Accept that. For the last cut, I need to get rid of that little piece of data from the bottom of the cylinder. This is a mating surface, so I wanna make sure that it's clear for the bottom of the water pump to connect to this. So I can make a brand new sketch on this face. I'm gonna click on this edge here and click on offset entities two millimeters, click on one end point and snap it to the other. I get a nice profile, features, extrude cut, through all, change the direction, and that gets rid of that little piece of data. And that's it. That's how you reverse engineer a part in SOLIDWORKS using references from Artec Studio. Thank you for watching.